uh, <clears throat> what you call an isothermal mash system. So there's no heat on this mash now. What we have to do is we have to mix hot water and grain together and hit a very specific temperature uh, for the proper conversion to get the right amount of sugar in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the final wort. And it's those sugars that are responsible ultimately for the alcohol. That's exactly right. The yeast will, uh, will metabolize the sugar and turn it into uh, alcohol and CO2. That's basically what it does. And all the wonderful flavors that come out of the beer as well. So what, what beer are we making today? Uh, today we're, uh, we're mashing in a hop czar. So This is uh, basically our flagship beer now. Uh, and uh, so we're gonna, it's going to take quite a bit of grain. It fills up the mash down to 4,500 pounds of, of, uh, of grist, of ground malt that goes into the mash on this. Uh, it, uh, it really fills up this mash down. You need a lot of malt to make a, to make a fairly high alcohol beer like Hops are. This will yield about 64 barrels when we get done. 64 beer barrels. So how much grain do you guys go through in a week? Uh, typical week, uh, we would go through about maybe 90 to 100,000 pounds, so something like that. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a bit, especially for you know the fact that we bring in our malt through a, through a public loading zone outside, 60,000 pounds at a time. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of grain to try to move through this brewery, no doubt about it. Wow. And if you haven't had the Hopsar, it's definitely worth having. It's a great beer. So what are you doing right now? I saw you kind of sticking the, the stick in there and moving uh, around. Uh, we milled this in um, after we're done our last mash from last night, so it's just sitting in there overnight, so it kind of packs. Uh, right, we try to get as much stuff done as we can ahead of time, so up above here, hanging up above us right now is that 4,500 pounds of grain in that, in that grist hopper, and he's, what he's doing is he's dropping the grain in to this, which is called the Steels Masher. What the Steels Masher does is it mixes the water, the hot water and the grain and the grist together, and then drops it into the mash done. So, Right now, what he's doing is he's got that hot water and the, and the grain starting to drop into the mash tun. You can hear this thing running a little bit right now. So, so what this is doing is that it's it's combining the right amount of water with the right amount of grain. Right. You yeah. just want to kind of get them mixed together so okay. they uh, so they go in there relatively evenly. We have a fairly even mash bed inside the mash tun. It'll take them right around a half an hour to uh, to, to mash in. From there, basically, what we're trying to do is you're trying to uh, we we have to hit that very specific temperature in order for that sugar or for all the starches and the grain to convert into to fermentable sugars for the, uh, for the uh, yeast to be able to metabolize. So yeast can only metabolize pretty simple sugars, so we have to take that starch and break it down until it's simple sugars, and then we'll run that off of the kettle. What a mash tun does is it actually acts as a big filter as well. There's the husk of the grain that stays in the mash tun, and that'll filter out that liquid and make it relatively clear going into the uh, brew kettle, which is the second step of the process. This is a pretty old school mash tun, actually. This is something that uh, is, is done quite a bit differently. There's a lot of stuff still done by hand in this brewery. I refer to our brew house as a semi-automatic brew house. There's some processes that occur automatically, some processes that occur uh, um, still by hand. And what's John Luke doing right now? Well, you added some, uh, some minerals in, basically, or some salts that you add. Uh, we have very, very soft water in Portland. You have to kind of add some salts back for the process, a little bit of a, um, we call them salts, but basically what it is is minerals that are, are necessary for, a, uh, for the, uh, the breakdown of that sugar and for the, uh, for the processes that occur. It's impressive. That's one heck of a machine. Um, it is, yeah. It's an uh, it's, uh, interesting, uh, interesting device, no doubt about it. So. I'm just trying to figure out if the dimensions work out to fit in my garage. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. So what else is going to happen in this process now? I mean, he's, he's got the grains coming in, the water's coming in. Right, what he's doing is uh, we have an agitator that's inside that actually will turn. He's got that turning slowly right now. And what that does is since we don't really have any heat control on this thing, we want to have that heat as consistent as possible throughout this, throughout this system. If we miss that mash temperature uh, up or down very much, it'll definitely change the, the final product for us. Um, if you get it too low, the beer will uh, over ferment, it'll become too dry, too much alcohol. If we get it too high, it'll under ferment and we won't create enough alcohol. So we do, we're pretty good at this. We've, we've, uh, we've had a lot of practice over the years. So um, we can usually hit that temperature within about a half a degree one way or the other uh, Fahrenheit. That, that's amazing. And the fact that you guys are able to get that so consistent, because that's one of the things I noticed that some of the smaller breweries struggle with is that consistency sometimes. I think that's one of the things that, uh, that during the infancy of craft brewing, you know, 20, 25 years ago, 
um, people would go to a, go to a bar and drink a beer, and they say, "Wow, this is an incredible beer." And then they come back two weeks later, and they get uh, they order the same beer, and it would be different. And so that's kind of one of the things that people, I think, had complaints about craft brewing to start with is the fact that they couldn't be consistent. They weren't able to make them consistent. That's one of the goals that we have is that when somebody drinks an IPA or a Hop Czar or a Kingpin, is that they get that same experience every time. We're able to do that consistently. Part of my job is to keep that hurting, uh, keep hurting those ingredients and hurting the process so that we, we, uh, we do keep things consistent. People can have that same experience time after time. And well, that's that's really what it's all about. Hey, Joe, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Oh, awesome. I'm jealous. I would love to. I'd love to come do this every day with you. Sounds good. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> all right, I'll be here. <laughs>